Hey everyone, this is Adam Kelly. This video is part of the Unity Coin Collecting Platformer series. If you haven't been following along, you can find a link to the playlist in the description. Otherwise, open up your project and we will jump back in. We're going to add something that's definitely just for fun, but I think is a nice learning opportunity. We're going to add something to our character so that when it moves, dirt is going to be sort of kicked up. And I was thinking this made sense because if a cactus truly did move through the sand, it would probably be kicking up some dirt along the way. So we're going to use a particle system for this. And so we'll right click on this and we're going to add a particle system. I can't remember exactly what this is underneath. Um, effects. So it's underneath effects. We're going to add a particle system and we'll call this dirt emitter. And we need to do some things to it to make it actually look good. Um, so I need to reference my other side project here while I do this. Let me make sure I've got the right thing here. Okay, so there's a few things we need to change. So as you see here, um, it's just it's just kind of moving these white blobs out. That's not not what we want. So we're gonna change the duration to one. And then we're gonna change the start delay, sorry, the start lifetime to one and the start speed to four. And then we want the Start size to equal 0 0.06, I believe. Okay, so now we've got these smaller particles coming out. It's starting to look like snow, actually. And then I'm just comparing side by side here, so forgive me. Uh, the gravity modifier we set to one. And so now you're starting to see that these are these are falling. And that's the idea is we're going to have these rocks that sort of like kick up and then fall down. Um, we want the simulation space set to world. And the reason for that is if it's set to local, as the player moves, the dirt is going to follow it along. And we want those rocks to sort of be left behind as we're moving. Simulation speed is one. Scale, yep. Local, yep. Um, I think all of these are the same. Now we need to open up emission settings. And we're going to set this rate over time to 500. So now we've got lots more coming out. And then we want to set our shape. And the shape we're going to use is donut. OK, and we will set the radius to yep, one. We'll set this to 0.2, one, 360, random, zero, none. Okay, so now we need to rotate this. So the rotation set this to 90. And then the scale we're going to set to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So now we've got this coming out of the base here. So we're starting to see what this is supposed to look like here. Then there's a setting for velocity over lifetime. So let's check this box right here. And we're going to set the linear equal to 5 and the y. And then the speed modifier to 0 0.02. So now we're starting to get something that makes a little more sense here, I think. We're getting actual, kind of looks like believable dirt, maybe, if, if we were sliding through. Uh, there's something called size over lifetime here. You're starting to see this is a very complicated thing and you just can experiment with it forever until you get it to look kind of cool. If we click on this, what we want is more like this shape right here. Um, and basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna start out at full size and then over time, over the lifetime of the particle, it's gonna get smaller and smaller down to zero. And then rotation over lifetime. We'll turn that on. And we want to set the angular velocity to 45. Oh, OK, so that's already set as default. Um, now we come down to the renderer. 
And this is going to be set to mesh. And we have to tell it what mesh we want it to be. So um, we're going to set this instead of particles unlit, we want this material to be rock. So we're saying we want it to look like, oh gosh, there's a lot of rocks in here. Um, that's because it's used, it's got the materials that we imported from the mesh, but we want this, this one here that we created. And then the, what else do we need to set here? None, zero, view, yep. So I think all of these we leave the same. And then we just need to set this so that it's not using the cube. We want to probably use one of these meshes that we've got here. And we might need to mess with the size. I may have used a different mesh when I was testing this out. Um, here, we need to click in through here. And then we'll go to find um, a boulder. We'll use boulder one here for this. And it looks like maybe boulder one's a little too big for this. So let's change our scale down to even smaller, I believe. Or maybe that's the scale of, oh, that's the scale of the donut. So we need to set the scale of the object. And I apologize because I used a different mesh for this. Now I've got to find it. It's probably this start size. So if we set this to smaller, 0 0.03, 0 0.01. Yeah, okay, that's the one. So start size. Maybe we'll set it to 0 0.02. And I think if we press play now, Now you're starting to see some of that rock kind of coming out from behind it. So that's the idea there is that we've got this um, going right here. The only thing that's weird is now it's still coming up even if we're not moving. So that's the thing we want to change next. So the idea is that we're going to create a script that will make it so that those particles only emit when we're moving. So we're going to create a new C sharp script. So we'll go into our scripts folder and we'll create a C sharp script and we'll call it dirt emitter. And that just opened up Visual Studio but didn't go to dirt emitter for some reason. But here we are. And we're going to, we'll keep update, but let's delete this right here. We're going to, I'm just going to copy and paste kind of a big chunk right here just to save some time. So we're going to create three different variables here. They're all private. One is the simple character controller. So we keep track of that controller. We keep track of the particle system as well. And then we also uh, have a last emit state so that we can use this as a reference for whether we were previously emitting or not. And then we're going to have a a wake function where we just get those components. So we're going to get the character controller um, by getting component in parent. And the reason we do that is because this uh, emitter is a child of this. So we want to look for that character component on this character. And then we're going to be looking for this particle system on this same object. And then inside of update, we're going to do a few things. So we're going to create this Boolean that says should emit. And basically, this will be uh, equal to whether it's grounded. And if forward input is not 0 or turn input is not 0. So what this means is if we're either turning left or right, or we're moving forward or backward, and we're grounded, meaning we're not jumping in the air, obviously we don't want to kick up dirt if we're in midair, then we should emit. Then we do a quick check to see if should emit does not equal the last emit state. 
And the reason we're doing this is we don't really want to tell it to play and stop over and over and over again. If it's already emitting, we want to keep emitting. If it's already not emitting, we want to just keep it as is. So that's why we do this check. And then we have a really simple if else. So if should emit, then we say particle system dot play else particle system dot stop. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. It's just telling it to either play or stop. And then we set the last emit state to this current new state that we've just set. We'll save this. We have to go back into Unity. And then we have to apply this script to this dirt emitter. So we'll just drop this on here. And then if we press play, it should function as desired. So now you're, you're not seeing any emission. If I turn right or left, you're going to see that dirt. If I move forward or backward, you're going to see that dirt coming out. And if I jump in the air and move, you're not going to see any dirt coming out. So that's the idea with this. Now, this scene is functionally complete at this point, but there's a couple other things before we start building out our scene that I think would make sense to add or at least clean up. So this sky, the default sky, is kind of a pale blue. And I really like the darker blue that is uh, used in the sample scene. And so if you go to lighting, then there's this skybox material, default skybox. If we go into our materials, this was left behind from the Unity sample when we deleted some stuff. We can drag this into here, and then it makes the sky just look a little bluer and nicer. I kind of like that. Then there's another thing that I don't know if you noticed, but the shadows don't exactly look beautiful. Kind of see how you can see through this cactus. And that is unfortunately an artifact of this uh, style of modeling. This low poly style creates this weird kind of see through thing where the sun shines through and the shadow isn't created correctly. The same thing happens on meshes. So you're seeing it happen right here. And if we were to go over and look at that, um, you'd see it. You see it on the coin here. It took me a little bit to figure out why this is, how to fix it. But it turns out if we go into our settings folder, there's a bunch of different settings in here. One of them is the one that's currently being used. And we can find that by going into project settings. If you go to graphics, you see here it says it's using the universal RP high quality settings here. So we just need to find that one. If I click on it, you can see it says this is the universal RP high quality. And if we open this up and click on inspector, um, now we're able to edit things here. And so there's a lot going on. You have a lot of control over different settings here. Um, we're not going to worry about most of this. The one that's going to fix this is this normal bias. And I found that if I move this down to zero, then it resolves that issue. So it's not, it's still not the most beautiful uh, shadow in the world. It's still got some rough edges. And it's possible that it's, you know, that you could improve that shadow quality. But I think just fixing that um, see throughness of the, of the shadows is a dramatic improvement. So I just wanted to mention that before we proceed. I also mentioned that maybe we would make our coins uh, rotate. So I'm going to set that up now. So we'll go into scripts. And I haven't done this ahead of time, so hopefully I don't waste too much time on this. So we're going to create a C sharp script and we'll just call it rotate. And technically, I guess we could do this in coin. Maybe that's a cleaner way to do it. But um, this way, if there's anything else you want to rotate in your scene, you can uh, use this script over. So we're going to create a new uh, variable called public float uh, speed. OK, and then the idea is we're going to give it a speed and it's going to rotate at that speed. So I don't think we need this start function at all. We're just going to update the rotation based on the time. So we're going to say um, transform 
dot rotation dot y equals and then we need something that's going to rotate this around um, and so we're going to just set the is it going to let me do this cannot modify the return value of rotation oh okay i can't i can't change just this y directly i'm going to have to set it to a new vector new vector three and we're going to say zero in the x and then we're going to set it to something in the y and then zero in the z and then we'll put a semicolon on the end and then the idea here is we're just going to change the degrees uh, of the rotation and so we should be able to just say something like uh, time dot time times speed and I'm not sure why it's telling me it cannot implicitly convert type to quaternion. Um, okay, so maybe we need to create a quaternion. New quaternion. Quaternions are a different form of rotation. Um, and it doesn't seem to want us to just pass in Euler values. So we will try uh, new, we'll just say quaternion dot Euler. Okay, and Euler just means we're going to use degrees to turn things. And we should be able to just pass in these here. Okay, so this, we need to set this default speed equal to something. And so we're, we're multiplying the time by some speed. So let's say we wanted it to rotate at like one meter per second or, or one full turn per second. Um, I'm trying to think of how exactly we would want to do that. Um, one second, then we would want to go 360 degrees. I really don't know exactly what this is going to be. Let's just set this to one. Sometimes you need to just experiment. And I don't want to think too hard. So... We're going to take the coin and we're going to apply this rotate to it and then we'll click play. And if we click into the scene, we're looking at this and it's going really slow rotation. So let's see if my instinct was correct. Okay, so like if we set this to 360, now it's rotating um, a full turn every one second. So that's probably what we want. So we might as well just set this to something like 360. And then we should be able to just plop this rotation. We'll update this here as well. And then we can put this on the other coin as well. Put rotate on here. All right. And then. Now we've got two coins that rotate for us as well. So they definitely draw the eye to it a lot more than if they were just static in space. And it looks more like, you know, a, a traditional video game. So we collect these two coins and then we can go all the way over here and open our door. So that's the game. Now we want to come back in and add a lot more interesting stuff to this level. Hey, we really hope you're enjoying the course so far. If you are, make sure to check out the rest of our courses on ImmersiveLimit.com. There's other Unity and Blender related game development stuff that you'll probably be interested in. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.